time to prepare his defense, but Judge Mary Catherine Huffman was having none of it. You've had months to research this matter. This is why I suggested to you that you have counsel. This is because Wilkins had repeatedly tried to disrupt court proceedings. Do not speak out in court again. He said the court was being unfair to him and made claims of being lynched. Donna, would you please ask the bailiff and the sheriffs no, to just go get a tree and bring it in here and just miss the hanging, that the lynching, you know, because this is a lynching. I mean, this is a modern day lynching. What in a Darrow? What was that dude name from Wisconsin? Darrow Brooks? That's what it is. You are not to speak, sir. Modern day lynching. Knock it off. Wilkins had already delayed the trial for three consecutive days, and Judge Huffman had enough. I have repeatedly advised you, sir, that you will lose your right to represent yourself because of your conduct. Do you understand that? No, Your Honor, I don't. Yes, you do understand it. But Wilkins saved his best for last. Did she inform you that she had family in another part of Ohio? She did not provide me with that information, no. As he was questioning a witness, something seemed wrong with Wilkins. She never provided you. Excuse me, hope so. So the judge is like, oh, what now? Your Honor, excuse me for a second. I need, I need some time. And then Wilkins suddenly collapsed, clutching his heart. We're going to take a break, ladies and gentlemen, if you'll please step out. Court medics examined Wilkins and caught his fake. No concerns at all. We may need some water. Judge Huffman seemed unmoved. The defendant is um, feigning some medical condition. But Wilkins was not done. He then acted unresponsive and slumped in his chair. Record should reflect that the defendant is slouching over to the side and acts like he's sleeping. His, his breath appears to be quite normal. Doesn't appear to be labored in Yo, this judge is over his shit. Anyway, is that a fair assessment, sir? Yes. It's not labored in any manner. Yes, um, does he appear to be doing anything to you other than sitting in that chair? No, Your Honor. Then a court deputy made a genius move to wake him up. Oh, a remarkable uh, change. A strong dose of smelling salt brought Wilkins back to life, and the trial resumed. Mr. Wilkins, do you have any questions for this witness, sir? But Wilkins just kept staring at the deputy. I'll take Yo, I'm screaming. Yo, this judge is over him. That is a no, sir. Thank you, sir. You may step down. Judge Huffman reminded him that his ruse was up. You've been checked out by trained deputies who are medics. You've been uh, checked out by a registered nurse as well as an emergency medical technician, all of whom indicate that there is nothing physically wrong with you, nor any reason why you couldn't continue here, sir. And said his actions will not cause a mistrial. To make some effort to cause a mistrial, but as I advised you, sir, and as the case law is very clear about, your behavior will not cause a mistrial. And finally, gave him an ultimatum. Sir, in five minutes, I'm going to start again, with or without you. Despite his best efforts, Wilkins was convicted of all charges and was sentenced to... What up, what up, YouTube? What up, what up, what up, YouTube? You click the title, you read the page, so I'm going to just get to the point. First of all, killers collapsing in court. Now, here's the thing. You knew what you did before you did it, okay? You're a killer. Duh. So the nerve, the audacity to act surprised at your sentence to the point where you want to collapse. Listen, I don't do crime because I refuse to do the time, okay? So that's why I ain't into all that. Because I'm starting to think a lot of these people be a little um and part of my community. They don't be want to admit it, especially the men. Because it's like, why y'all be in and out of jail so much? Hmm? I mean, there's nothing fun about jail. <laughs> like, there's nothing cool about jail. Anyway, shout out to um courtroom consequences. Hope you're feeling good. Hope you're feeling great. This Death by lethal injection. The court sentence you, sentences you to death by lethal injection. You shall recommend the death penalty. We therefore unanimously find that the sentence of death oh, is gosh. signed by all 12 jurors, including the four person. I hope that girl, when you die, you will get the punishment you deserve from God.
I'd have been like, if I was a judge, I'd have been like, girl, get up. Still going to jail. This is Shanita Latrice Cunningham and Erica. She did it. Her name's Shanita. May Butts. <laughs> nah, I'm playing. I love you if your name's Shanita. Who are on trial for killing a child in South Carolina. The two reportedly <laughs> and three-year-old Serenity Richardson to death when Butts was babysitting the child at her home in Somerville. Butts, who was Serenity's godmother, later confessed to repeatedly <laughs> the child with a belt when she urinated on the floor. Not only that, when Serenity became un- Everybody don't need children. Conscious, they tried to revive her by putting bleach under her nose and putting her in an ice bath. Serenity suffered from more than 250 injuries to her body, including a lacerated liver, broken ribs, and a fractured skull. Such was the horrific nature of the abuse that prosecutors said the only uninjured part of Serenity's body were the soles of her feet. Both Cunningham and Butts were charged and convicted of child abuse murder. At their sentencing, Judge Deidre Richardson said nothing had ever affected her as strongly as the photos of the little girl's battered Oh no, oh no. Body. That just broke my heart. Give him life. The severity of the blow to that child's leg and to say that you did not recognize what had been done to ignore what must have been the excruciating sounds that came from that child on a daily basis is more than disconcerting to this court. She then sentenced the two killers to life in prison without parole. And they look mad pussy. That's the thing. It'd it, it be people like this that want to be bringing harm to children. You wouldn't last a day with me, baby. What? And as such, the court finds it appropriate that each be sentenced to the State Department of Corrections for a period of life. This is when things got crazy. Girl, okay, you killed that baby. Get up. Get her ass up. Shaniqua, what was her name? After the verdict, the two defendants collapsed as screams of their family members echoed through the courtroom. Y'all still like her? Y'all still love her? She just bodied her baby. What is wrong with people? Both women started hyperventilating and had to be restrained and wheeled out of court. While the chaotic and bizarre collapse in court was truly shocking, what happens when a murder for hire plot goes wrong? Like in the case of Diana Lovejoy, a YouTuber who conspired to murder her ex-husband in California. Oh yeah, I remember that. She's sick. California. We, the jury, in the above entitled cause, find the defendant, Diana Jean Lovejoy, guilty of the crime of conspiracy to commit murder. Reports suggest that in 2016, Lovejoy hired firearms instructor Weldon McDavid Jr. to assassinate her ex-husband, Greg Mulvihill. Lovejoy and Greg were reportedly going through a bitter divorce and custody battle at the time. McDavid See, that's another reason why. That just adds to my fail. Never want to get married because I don't want no wife trying to kill me. You know what I'm saying? Like, pfft, mm. It allegedly lured Greg to a secluded area in Carlsbad by pretending to have information that would help him with the case against Lovejoy. But when Greg arrived at the scene, several shots were fired at him. His friend called 911. Hello, this is 911. Yeah. I, uh, my friend has just been shot. Do you know who shot him? There's a guy lying down like a sniper. A sniper? Did you see him at all? Briefly, we saw the, the gun, and he shot at us like six or seven times. One of the bullets hit Greg, and he was fading fast. My friend's getting lightheaded. That's okay. I got paramedics in route, okay? How about officers in route? I got to help out to you, okay? When police arrived, they found Greg in his car bleeding out. Greg was rushed to a nearby hospital where he survived. Poli oh, I know she was tight. Police learned the call that McDavid made to lure Greg came from a burner phone, which was purchased by Lovejoy two weeks before the shooting. She don't even know how to do crime right, stupid. She's supposed to have... It don't matter what you're supposed to do. 
why would you go and get the burner phone yourself and then on top of that you got nothing on your face she's stupid as hell no disguise no nothing she also allegedly paid the assassin two thousand dollars lovejoy was arrested and charged with attempted murder and conspiracy to commit murder at her trial greg took the stand and described the chilling moments right before he was shot after the second time of shining the light on it and staring at it for a second, I realized I was looking at a barrel and a scope of a gun. Eventually, the jury found Lovejoy guilty of all charges. This is when things got crazy. We, the jury, in the above entitled cause, find the defendant, Diana Jean Lovejoy, guilty of the crime of conspiracy to commit murder. Girl, she said, get, get your ass up. All right, we're going to need to take a break. We're down. And if we could have, so we could have the jury back. Lovejoy had collapsed out of shock and was sent to the hospital. Lovejoy was unconscious for a time, then taken to a hospital for treatment. A few months later, Lovejoy was back in court for her sentencing, where she made an emotional plea to the judge. I still care about Greg in as much as he... Girl, you tried it off. <laughs> I did love him. I loved him a lot. And I really cared about him, and I still care about Greg. Ultimately, Lovejoy was sentenced to 26 years to life in prison. 26 years to life. And as for McDavid, he received a sentence of 50 years to life. While Diana Lovejoy collapsed. You missed, dummy. <laughs> well, I mean, shit. Thank God he missed because he would have been down for murder. Collapsed in court after learning her fate. Shit, he damn near did, though. How does it compare to becoming a viral meme? Bruh. Oh, as well. Like in the case of Tony Farmer, a former top 100 ESPN recruit and potential NBA prospect. Who now, how did he end up here? Facing assault charges in Ohio. In April 2012, Farmer reportedly assaulted his ex girlfriend, Andrea Lane, at her apartment complex in Bedford Heights. I'll be trying to tell y'all, get you the right woman because look, he had a nice future ahead of himself. And then he went down for assaulting his girl. Now, I'm not saying that it was her fault, but all I'm saying is clearly it was a toxic situation. Sometimes you got to exit out those toxic situations. CCTV footage captured the whole incident. First, Farmer was seen confronting the 18-year-old as she left the building. Oh, boy. And tried to grab her bag. Yo, she looked mad scared. Oh, wow. What? This is... Triggering. This is some Diddy shit. But that was not the full extent of the vicious beating. Another camera caught Andrea trying to get back to her apartment when Farmer attacked her a second time. Women, when it's toxic, you gotta go. She probably figured, hey, he got a nice little future ahead of himself. Nah, he's off his shit. Get up out of there. He tried to grab Andrea, but when she refused and asked him to leave, Farmer became completely unhinged. Taking her so long to get in the building, I'm so mad. I'm like, come on, somebody help her! Let her in the building. He's psycho. While a helpless Andrea cowered in the corner, Farmer repeatedly delivered vicious kicks to her head before leaving. Oh my good nah. I know he was a good person. I hope he still is. I hope he learns from this. He really needs help. However, her request did not sway Judge Pamela Barker. There's nothing in the sentencing guideline that talks about him being a basketball star and being able to go forward when uh, obviously I think she's been very traumatized by this whole situation. She said that just traumatized me. Concluded that Farmer was not remorseful as he had sent threatening messages to the victim after the assault. He certainly threatened her or said that um, he should have done something more to her. And so uh, that, in addition to what I saw on the tape, was very telling to me. And it was a violation of the no contact order that was put in place to protect her. Now, what happened next became a part of Internet history. While Judge Barker was reading out his sentence, Farmer collapsed. As to count three of that case, the robbery, which is also a felony of the second degree. Boy, shut up. You wasn't crying. You was beating the brakes off that girl. The court uh, orders that the defendant shall serve a term of two years on that oh, count as well. How y'all even supporting this scumbag? 
As family members wept in the background, Farmer's reaction became a viral meme on social media. Bruh. Still in shock, Farmer was helped up to his feet as the judge completed her sentence. On the sole count of the indictment in case 564206, the felony of the third degree, the court orders that the defendant shall serve a term of nine months in prison on that count. All of these terms are going to be served concurrently, which means that the defendant is, in effect, going to spend three years in prison. Damn, three years, man. You should have just controlled yourself. You crashed out, dummy. He had a whole future ahead of himself. While Tony Farmer will spend three years in prison for his poor choices and violent behavior, how does it compare to faking a heart attack in court? Like in the case of Keyson Wilkins, who's facing assault charges in Ohio. Excuse me, as per reports, Wilkins was on trial facing multiple charges, including felony assault, after he tried to murder a man in Dayton. Wilkins decided to represent himself in court. He asked for more time to prepare his defense, but Judge Mary Catherine Huffman was having none of it. You've had months to research this matter. This is why I suggested to you that you have counsel. This is because Wilkins had repeatedly tried to disrupt court proceedings. Do not speak out in court again. He said the court was being unfair to him and made claims of being lynched. Donna, would you please ask the bailiff and the sheriffs to just go get a tree and bring it in here and just begins to hang him. That's the lynching, you know, because this is a lynching. I mean, this is a modern day lynching. What in a Darrow? What was that dude name from Wisconsin? Darrow Brooks? That's what it is. You are not to speak, sir. Modern day lynching. Knock it off. Wilkins had already delayed the trial for three consecutive days, and Judge Huffman had enough. I have repeatedly advised you, sir, that you will lose your right to represent yourself because of your conduct. Do you understand that? No, Your Honor, I don't. Yes, you do understand it. But Wilkins saved his best for last. Did she informed you that she had family in another part of Ohio? She did not provide me that information, no. As he was questioning a witness, something seemed wrong with Wilkins. She never provided with you. Excuse me, hope so. So the judge is like, oh, what now? Your Honor, excuse me for a second. I need, I need some time. And then Wilkins suddenly collapsed, clutching his heart. We're going to take a break, ladies and gentlemen, if you'll please step out. Court medics examined Wilkins and caught his fake. No concerns at all. We may need some water. Judge Huffman seemed unmoved. The defendant is um, feigning some medical condition. But Wilkins was not done. He then acted unresponsive and slumped in his chair. The record should reflect that the defendant is slouching over to the side and acts like he's sleeping. His, his breath appears to be quite normal. Doesn't appear to be labored in Yo, this judge is over his shit. Anyway, is that a fair assessment, sir? Yes. It's not labored in any manner. Yes, um, Does he appear to be doing anything to you other than sitting in that chair? No, Your Honor. Then a court deputy made a genius move to wake him up. Oh, a remarkable uh, change. A strong dose of smelling salt brought Wilkins back to life and the trial resumed. Okay. Mr. Wilkins, do you have any questions for this witness, sir? But Wilkins just kept staring at the deputy. I'll take Yo, I'm screaming. Yo, this judge is over him. That is a no, sir. Thank you, sir. You may step down. Judge Huffman reminded him that his ruse was up. You've been checked out by trained deputies who are medics. You've been uh, checked out by a registered nurse as well as an emergency medical technician, all of whom indicate that there is nothing physically wrong with you, nor any reason why you couldn't continue here, sir. And said his actions will not cause a mistrial. To make some effort to cause a mistrial, but as I advised you, sir, and as the case law is very clear about, your behavior will not cause a mistrial. And finally, gave him an ultimatum. Sir, in five minutes, I'm going to start again, with or without you.
Despite his best efforts, Wilkins was convicted of all charges and was sentenced to 40. Damn, I wonder why he was cutting up in court. He like, listen, man, I ain't got nowhere to go but jail, so let me just drag this out. Two years in prison. While Keyson Wilkins' legal career ended with a 42-year sentence, how does it compare to calling for mommy in court? <laughs> like in the case of Shelby Isaac, who's facing double murder charges in Tennessee. In 2016, 18-year-old Isaac reportedly shot and killed Eddie Tate and his girlfriend Edwina Thomas at a parking lot in Memphis. The alleged motive? A bad hair weave. Isaac had bought $250 worth of hair extensions from Tate. Oh yeah, she wildin'. I remember this, but we gonna rock out to this. Apparently upset with her purchase, Isaac scheduled a second meeting to get her money back. An argument ensued, and Isaac pulled a gun and shot the couple. Edwina Thomas was eight weeks pregnant at the time. What happened in this parking lot on Friday night? Police say E.J. Tate and his girlfriend Edwina Thomas were shot while sitting in a car. Isaac was arrested and charged with first degree murder. At her trial, Victoria Say, who was Isaac's getaway driver, gave inconsistent testimonies after claiming to have witnessed Isaac pulling the trigger. The defense also made a case for a lack of physical evidence. When you follow the credible and unbiased evidence in this case, it does not lead you to Shelby Isaac. It does not lead you to Shelby Isaac. However, the jury saw otherwise. Has the jury arrived at a verdict in this case? All four counts? Were they unanimous? They found Isaac guilty of second-degree murder. The reads when the jury find the defendant guilty of second-degree murder as included in count one. What happened next shocked everyone in court, except Judge James Lammy. Four person of the jury, Ms. Murphy, is that your verdict? Girl, you know what you did, man. All that over some weave. Aubrey, is that your verdict? As her verdict was being read, Isaac collapsed in her attorney's arms and then onto the floor. But Judge Lammy seemed unmoved. And is that your verdict, man? Is that your verdict, man? Sir, is that your verdict? Ma'am, is that your verdict? Ma'am, is that your verdict? As court staff attended to Isaac, Judge Lammy carried on with business as usual. Yo, I'm we. He said, all right, so, and another thing, uh, yeah, you're getting life. Uh, is that your verdict, ma'am? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, sir. Is that your verdict, sir? Is that your verdict, sir? Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> Ask count two of the indictment. Will you the jury find the man guilty of second degree murder? After a few minutes, as the judge went on, Isaac let out a scream and cried for her mother. But Judge Lammy was not amused and continued with the proceedings. You <laughs> like, yeah, whatever. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Oh, he moving like, you know, you break up with your ex or whatever. Yeah, I break up and then they want to cry. So how much they love you? You just so, oh, I'm sorry. You just so over the tears. You like, yeah, whatever. Still, I'm still going to block you after this call. This week, you know, it's been a hard week for all of you. Ultimately, Isaac was sentenced to 30 years in prison. While Shelby Isaac killed a whole family for getting bad hair extensions, what happens when a robbery goes horribly wrong? Like in the case of Jaleel Smith Riley, who's facing murder charges in Ohio. In 2013, 23-year-old Smith Riley reportedly shot and killed 22-year-old Portia Brooks and injured her boyfriend Aaron Martin in a robbery gone wrong. Portia and Aaron were sitting in their car on Carthage Avenue in Norwood when Smith Riley and two others approached them with guns. Smith Riley ordered Aaron out of the car and when he didn't have any cash, shot him in the head, causing permanent brain damage. He then leaned into the car. Damn. Oh, makes me want to carry cash. And fired at Portia. She died three days later. After the culprits escaped, passersby called 911. There was a guy outside of the car who looked like he had, like he was bleeding from multiple spots. There's a lady in it, and she's bleeding. Smith Riley was arrested and charged with both shootings. To avoid the death penalty, he pled guilty to aggravated murder and attempted murder. 
since had a change of heart, would like to withdraw his guilty plea. At his sentencing, the victim's family members addressed their loved one's killer. But he killed me mentally, emotionally. He killed my identity as a mother of three, as a family of four. This is what I have left because of his greed, his selfishness, his complete disregard of and disrespect of others and life. This is what I have left. I, I talk to her, I kiss her, I hold her. But as you can see, I get nothing back except the reality that she is gone. Portia's sister asked for Smith Riley to be denied parole. He wants parole. Well, I want my sister. Let's you trade me. I have to deal with life without Portia, so he should deal with life without without parole. He should deal with getting... I ain't even going to say because I don't want to get demonetized, but I hate scumbags like this. Then Smith Riley approached the court and begged for a lenient sentence. Nigga, <laughs> shut up. It's like you faking that. I'm so sorry. His attorney also offered some final words. Somebody that feels genuine remorse. This is somebody that thinks about this every day. Oh, so what it says is that he calm now, girl. And he knows that he can't go back in time and undo what he did. Despite all the pleas, the judge stood firm. This is when things got crazy. As the judge sentenced Smith Riley, he broke down and collapsed. Poor defendant serve a term of life without parole. As to count four for the offense of attempted murder. <laughs> Ultimately, Smith Riley received a life sentence without the possibility of parole. While Smith Riley's senseless actions destroyed a young couple's life, what happens when a celebrity commits a crime in broad daylight? Like in the case of Suge Knight, a powerful music mogul Yo, what? who's facing murder charges in California. In January 2015, Knight was involved in a tragic incident with longtime rival Clay Sloan outside a Compton burger stand. CCTV footage shows Knight arriving in a red pickup truck, after which he got into an altercation with Sloan. Yo, son, since I was a kid, I always heard these crazy stories about Suge Knight. Like, yo, they say you don't mess with Suge Knight, bro. I wonder, is this, now that he in jail, is it still the same way? Does he still got that juice? Because, you know, Snoop Dogg got death row now, so... How'd that work? Drop a comment, let me know. Buck striking Sloan down. What Knight did next shocked the whole music industry. In an attempt to run over Sloan, Knight accidentally knocked down and ran over Terry Carter, a Compton businessman. Sloan suffered serious injuries while Terry- Yo, what? He tried to run over the door? Terry Carter died on the spot. Knight turned himself in in style, wearing sunglasses with a cigar in hand. Like, do you not have no remorse? What up, sure. What up, sure. How you doing, man? But it didn't last long. At his bond hearing, when the defense was arguing... $25 million. Yo, what? Shook, sure, get up! And was rushed to the hospital. Knight's attorney said he was not receiving proper treatment in jail for diabetes blood clots to the lung but it's really not being treated for the diabetes you know and it just I don't know why he hasn't been eventually in October 2018 Knight pleaded no contest to voluntary manslaughter charge how do you plead no contest. do you admit that you personally used a deadly and dangerous weapon within the meaning of penal code section 12022 subsection B yes at his sentencing, Terry Carter's daughter had some scathing words for her father's killer. Your actions after you callously murdered my dad in cold blood were calculating and deplorable and reflective of a lack of moral character and no respect for human lives. What I do know is that your unrepentant, remorseful, callous, unashamed actions took my dad's life away. He is truly a disgusting, selfless disgrace to human decency. As part of his plea deal, Knight was ultimately sentenced to 28 years in prison. For the crime which the defendant has been convicted in count one. Damn, Suge, I never get out. For a total unstayed term of 28 years. 
While Suge Knight's fall from grace was certainly shocking, what happens when a carjacking plot goes horribly wrong? Like in the case of Robert Gee, who was facing murder charges in Michigan. On June 26, 2014, Gee's friend Deshaun Boylan stole a car outside a bar in Muskegon Heights. Outside, 26-year-old Jacob Ramos saw his brother's car get stolen and sprang into action. Throwing his jacket aside, he jumped on his motorcycle and sped after the carjacker. He bugging. I was listen. If you your car getting stolen, just call the police. That's what that's what our tax dollars come for. And you gotta let you gotta call the police anyway. Especially if you got car insurance, you gotta have to call them anyway because the police gonna want to see the police report. I mean, the car insurance people they gonna want to see the police report because they're not gonna let your car was stolen anyway. So um yeah, just call the police. Ain't nobody doing that. Who he thought he was? Unknown to Rameau, he was being pursued by a car with Robert Gee inside. Gee leaned out of the moving car and shot Rameau in the back, causing him to crash his motorcycle in the yard of a homeowner who called 911. What's going on here? Some guy that showed up with motorcycle in my yard. He's laying in your yard? Yeah, he's out. Do you have the fire department and ambulance and the police and how, okay? Rameau died at the scene of the accident. Gee was arrested and charged with murder, felony firearms, and possession of a firearm. At his trial, an eyewitness who was inside the car with Gee that night testified. When you say he shot the gun, how is it that he shot the gun? Where was nah, not you was with a snitch. Was his hand and arm position. Out what window? At the passenger side of the window. And in what direction did he have the gun pointed? Towards the car and the motorcycle. Prosecutors argued Gee's action that night was intentional. He puts his entire head, neck, torso, arm, entire upper half of his body out that window to take aim. And he intends to hit that man on the bike with the bullet. Eventually, Gee was found guilty of first degree murder. At his sentencing, tensions were running high in the gallery. As the judge was reading out the sentence, the courtroom erupted. The Court of Appeals case just about a month ago, People versus Girl, he shot that innocent man. Shut up. The outburst started when Guy began to get dizzy and his family members thought he was having a medical issue. Guy's family members were removed from the courtroom and the commotion shifted outside. Their concerns turned true shortly after when Guy collapsed in his chair and had to be carried out of the courtroom. Gee was later sentenced to life in prison without parole for the murder of Jake Ramo. As for Deshaun Boylan, who started the entire chain of events, he was convicted of first-degree murder and perpetration of a larceny and also sentenced to life without parole. While Robert Gee will spend the rest of his life in prison for killing an innocent man, how does it compare to murdering an entire family for vengeance? Like in the case of Ronald Lee Haskell, who's facing the death penalty in Houston. On July 9th, 2014, Haskell arrived at the Stay family home in Spring, Texas, dressed as a FedEx delivery driver. Ah, oh, no. What? 34-year-old Katie Stay was Haskell's ex-sister-in-law, whom he blamed for his divorce with her sister. What followed next sent shockwaves through the entire nation. This location is a home in an upscale neighborhood in Spring, where Haskell is believed to have shown up Wednesday afternoon, tied up five children and two adults inside, then shot each in the head. What? 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 Yo! The devil literally, he's like here on earth with us, cause what? Yo, you gotta be one sick son of a bitch. Upon arriving, Haskell pulled out a nine millimeter pistol and fatally shot Katie and her husband, Stephen Stay. He then went on to systematically execute four-year-old Zach, seven-year-old Rebecca, nine-year-old Emily, and 13-year-old Brian, 
The only nah, that is sick and twisted, bro. Only survivor was 15-year-old Cassidy Stay, who played dead after being shot in the head. Despite her injuries, Cassidy managed to call the authorities. When police arrived, Haskell led them on a sensational pursuit. A dinnertime car chase through the crowded streets of suburban Houston. Police chased Haskell through the crowded streets of suburban Houston before throwing down a spike strip and cornering him in a cul-de-sac. Yo, all of that for a divorce? I'm trying to tell people, yo, love is a dangerous thing. Yo, you got to be careful with that shit. Some people really, like, when they, they take that love shit seriously, like, and you got to watch out people, like, never date somebody that's, like, overly obsessed with you. Because that's what this sounds like. Like, oh, he got a divorce, and now he blamed the sister, so now he going to body the whole family because he blamed the sister on, a, on like, she took his world. Because some, sometimes those people, they so in love that they, they just give their whole world to the person. It's like, you don't want to be with somebody that they tell you, oh, you're my world. Nah, break up with them. Like, no, you need your own world. Nah, because the moment you leave their world, they feel like they have no world because you're the... Haskell's car between two armored cars, ending the thrilling pursuit. Haskell refused to surrender and held a gun to his head. The standoff lasted for more than three hours before a hostage negotiation team arrived and... Man, he should have offed himself. ...convinced Haskell to surrender. Haskell was arrested and charged with capital murder. At his arraignment, Haskell who was off his meds at the time, started to feel a bit woozy. Off his meds. I wouldn't even date somebody that's even... You taking meds? I ain't dating you because you might snap any minute. Nope. And then suddenly, Haskell fell to his knees and had to be helped up by officers. But he collapsed again and was placed in a chair and wheeled out of the courtroom. He fell to his knees. The Boy, you body the whole family. Don't nobody got no sympathy for you or your eight different nut. She then testified how her uncle executed her entire family. She said as she described how the victims were shot one by one. And showed the jury her scar where Haskell's bullet grazed her skull. Cassidy then showing the jury the wound left behind by a bullet that grazed her head. Eventually, it was time for Haskell to learn his fate. Mr. Haskell, please stand to receive the verdict. Uh, the jury having found you guilty of the capital murder of Stephen Stay and Katie Stay, the court sentence you, sentences you to death by lethal injection. Yeah, we don't need him here. My tax dollars can't be paying for him to eat. After the sentencing, Cassidy directly addressed the man who killed her family. I'm going to continue to live my life with happiness and I'm going to move forward and I'm going to forget about this and I'm going to forget about you. You've been in control long enough and now your game is up. You're not in control anymore. You've lost and this is it for you. She said that God was his only hope now. I hope that when you die, you will get the punishment you deserve from God. Only God can help you now. Ronald Lee Haskell is currently awaiting execution at the Allen B. Polensky unit near Livingston. While Ronald Lee Haskell will die for his ruthless killings, what happens when a serial killer can't stop confessing his crimes? Like in the case of Anthony Kirkland, who's facing multiple murder charges in Ohio. What did you do? Yo, what is going on in Ohio? In 2009, 13-year-old Esme Kenny went missing from the woods near her home in Cincinnati. When police searched the area, they found Kirkland sleeping nearby and brought him in for questioning. You were in this area right around the time this occurred. Do you remember seeing a young a young girl, for example? I don't remember seeing that. At first, Kirkland denied everything, but when police found Esme's watch and iPod in his possession, Kirkland admitted to running into her. What if I told you that this wristwatch and this radio belong to this missing girl? And it was an accident, okay? It was an accident on temper. She explain it to me, I, I understand it. Kirkland said he lost it when Esme reminded him of his wife. Okay, and then what? I dropped a beer in the She was a part to me. This poor baby. She helped me a lot. Okay. And then what happened? I saw my son's mother. What did you do then? He then went on to describe the horrifying fate of the teenager. Did you knock her out? This is when things got serious. 
You punched her, you kicked her, you stomped her. This is a child. So this is a, it's a young child we're talking about here. You want to play like games. I'm not playing no game with you, man. Well, you know what? She's defenseless. You're, you're, you're cat and mouse with me. I killed her because of my hatred. Well, what does that mean, Anthony? Eventually, the detectives managed to get Kirkland to open up. And open up, he did. What made you kill her? Mary, I'm sorry. But I told her she was a uh, See, yo, these niggas be. Mm -mm. Kirkland admitted to. These niggas be need to heal from that trauma. Sexually assaulting and killing Esme Kenny. She told me she wouldn't tell nobody. I didn't believe her. So is that when you choked her? However, he was just getting started. Shockingly, Kirkland then admitted to killing Mary Jo Newton in 2006 after their relationship had turned sour. Then what happened? Did she die in the van? How did she die? What happened to cause her death? And she told me that uh, the death would probably be a good thing. No matter how life has been. He also confessed to murdering 14-year-old Casanoia Crawford in 2006 after randomly meeting her near a high school. Now what'd you do? Oh, bro, burn him, bro, burn him. And if that wasn't enough, Kirkland had one more surprise for the detectives. I wasn't honest, totally. What were you honest about? Are there more bodies? Is that what you're saying? It was one more. What was the name of the person? She told me her name was Kim. He admitted to stabbing 25-year-old Kimya Rollison to death in 2006 after an argument between the two had turned ugly. Actually, she had a she had a knife. So she had the knife. You just turned it on her because she came after you. Right. Where did you hit her? In the throat. Yeah, sure we believe you, you prick. And where did she wear the throat? To, to the jugular. Kirkland burned all his victims' bodies in order to destroy evidence, a modus operandi that started way back in 1987 when he strangled and burned the body of 27-year-old Leola Douglas. Kirkland had served 16 years in prison for manslaughter, but this time it would- Why would they ever let this man out? Be way more. Kirkland pleaded guilty to the murders of Mary Jo Newton and Kimya Rollison, but went to trial for the killings of the two teenagers. The criminal record is long and sickening. Back in 1987, he murdered his girlfriend, set her on fire, took a plea deal, and served 16 years. And that's ridiculous. Why would they ever let him out after he bodied his girlfriend? took a plea deal laziness then at his arraignment stop giving these creeps fucking deals the unexpected happened as the judge was reading out his charges kirkland collapsed to the floor count four aggravated murder after he was helped up the hearing resumed and kirkland pleaded not guilty mr kirkland this is a death penalty case was the defendant's plea not guilty are at his trial Prosecutors asked for the death penalty. Is the mitigation outweighed by the aggravation? Period. And if it's outweighed by the aggravation and you're certain of it and you're sure of it, you shall recommend the death penalty for Anthony Kirkland. However, his defense made an argument for a life sentence based on Kirkland's mental health and traumatic past. Whether as a result of a Mental disease. Man, they call everything mental health, man. He knew enough to burn them bodies, man. Ain't nothing wrong with this, man. No, something wrong with him. He off his head, shit. But mentally, he knows right from wrong. What? Defect. The defendant was unable to control his actions and conform to the law. In fact, Kirkland had admitted to police that he was not in control of his actions. You killed a person last night. I Me. Kirkland then took to the stand where he showed remorse for his actions and apologized to the victim's families. I cannot offer an explanation for my atrocious acts. I understand I have hurt so many people. Yeah, with but, the but something's wrong with him mentally. He's able to read this speech and, and have remorse. Man, get the horrible crimes to all the families, friends, and loved ones. This country's a joke. Of those hurt and still hurting from my behaviors. 
I am truly sorry for your pain. Kirkland claimed that he was in fact the victim and didn't deserve to die. Please understand though, I am not here to beg for mercy, nor your forgiveness. I am proof a young person deeply abused physically, emotionally, and mentally becomes the abuser. I do not blame you if you kill me. I do not deserve to live. But please spare my life. Despite his pleas, Kirkland was ultimately sentenced to death. Thank God. We therefore unanimously find that the sentence of death should be imposed upon Anthony Kirkland and signed by all 12 jurors, including the four person. While Anthony Kirkland will die for his ruthless serial killings, how does it compare to murdering your own family? Like in the case of Gurpreet Singh, who's accused of killing four members of his family in Ohio. Yo, Ohio, nah. Thoughts and prayers, Ohio. On April 28th, 2019, Gurpreet allegedly shot and killed his wife, Shalindurjit Kaur, his in-laws, Hakikat Singh and Parmjit Kaur, and his aunt-in-law, Amarjit Kaur, at their apartment in Westchester Township. He then called 911. Why? Does it look like they've been shot? You said they're bleeding from the head? Okay, are any of them breathing? Okay, can you go check to see if they're breathing? You said you killed them? No, what are you talking about? Sir, did you do something to them? When police arrived, they found Gurpreet hysterical and covered in blood. Now, what you what y'all think the family done did? Cause to be this bad, like people are really sick, bro. That's your whole family. Gurpreet was brought in for questioning, where at first he seemed unaware of what exactly happened. What happened to them? It looks like somebody killed them. Uh, oh, uh, it, 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 but why? 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 I, I don't know. That's why I need your help. Gurpreet said when he came home that night, the main door was already open, and he found the victims lying on the floor. And then you go to the apartment. Is it locked? No. The door is open. Door open. Was it already open or was it shut? It, no, the door was open. It was already wide open. Yeah. Then uh, I step inside, uh, and then I see my wife over there, and then I see my aunt, and then like I told you, sir, uh, I just, I don't remember a whole lot after that. And I am just lying to try to shake them. But then Gurpreet refused to answer any more questions when police asked for a swab of his hands for gunpowder evidence. What, what is it? This is a consent for me to take the swab from your hand. You alright? Oh, I want to go home. This is wrong. This is wrong, but no one told me that this would happen. Eventually, police got the swab and Gurpreet was let go. But his freedom didn't last much longer because- Let go? Two months later, Gurpreet was arrested outside a Walmart in Connecticut and charged with four counts of aggravated murder. That is the moment you just saw there of police arresting Gurpreet Singh earlier this month. You can see he was outside what looks like a Walmart when police converged on him and got him on the ground. Singh is charged with killing four people, his wife, mother and father-in-law, and his aunt back in April. Then, at his bond hearing, something unexpected happened. Unlike the last time when he collapsed as he stood in front of the judge. As the judge was about to deny him bond, Gurpreet collapsed, hitting the ground with a loud thud and a groan. Boy, get up! Well, that right there, a little bit of drama today in a Butler County courtroom. The man accused of killing four people inside a Westchester apartment collapsed. After he was helped up by officers and placed on a chair, the judge finally denied him bond. A judge denied Singh bond this morning. At his trial, prosecutors said the murders were premeditated as they found a gun with its serial number drilled off and dumped in a lake near the crime scene. 
They also claimed that an extramarital affair was the motive behind the murders. Even though all the evidence pointed towards Gaprit, the jury shockingly failed to reach a unanimous decision, which led to a hung jury and ended in a mistrial. What? A hung jury is never a desirable outcome in a criminal case. The retrial is scheduled to begin on April 29th, 2024. If found guilty, Gurpreet Singh oh, I gotta look this up. Hold on. could face the death penalty. All right, so look, this is what I found so far. I want to see the update with this. He killed his wife and three members of her family back in 2019. And now Gapreet Singh has been sentenced to death. So Ken Brown has been following the trial. For All right, I got the update. 19 and now Gapreet Singh has been sentenced to death. So Ken Brown has been following the trial for us, joins us live now in Hamilton with a look back at the last five years of this investigation and the trials. Ken. Yeah, it's not just the trial that we've been covering for you guys. We've been there every step of the way from the start back in 2019 when the shooting and the murders took place. And we followed this all the way through for you guys. We felt that it was important to go through everything from shooting to today's sentencing. 911, where's your emergency? My wife, my dad, my mom, and my aunt. They're all down? Yes, please. What? We located four people deceased inside from apparent gunshots. Today, the Westchester police signed warrants for four counts of aggravated, aggravated murder on Gapreet Singh. It was only this defendant inside that small cramped apartment that night who had the motive, who had the opportunity, and who was actually physically present in that apartment. While he was there, he did not pull the trigger. He could not have been the shooter, and the background proves that someone else orchestrated this crime. He is here because he killed those people. We, the three-judge panel, unanimously find the defendant, Gurpreet Singh, guilty, 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 guilty. He deserved hell, so enjoy your last meal. We, the three-judge... Okay, all right, I'm glad we got that update. Subscribe for the vibe, I'm out.